Hello and welcome, I'm JD and today we're going to continue our way through the Protectorate Updates changelogs because it is so big and we're going to focus on all the railguns. Now it's important up front to talk about or define that when we talk about railguns, we're talking about alliance-based weapons and when we talk about mass drivers, it's the OSP and they are functionally different based on the types of ammunition that they fire. So first off, the Mark 82 railgun has been removed from the game. So as the Alliance, you only have the Mark 81 railgun now. And the Mark 550 mass driver, which you should read as Mark 550 railgun, has had its um, autoloader capacity reduced from 3 down to 1, and its reload time also from 45 seconds down to 15 seconds to effectively maintain the same um, capacity of fire but at a more sustained rate as opposed to bursts and then a long cooldown. Note that there are still some updates that are required to this flavor text. Uh, three round bursts are no longer a thing and it doesn't need a recycle time because it has an auto capacity of one. In addition, over on the OSP, the TE45 mass driver has been added. Um, it does have an auto load capacity of one as well, but a slightly longer reload time of 25 seconds. Um, you probably doesn't need a recycle time either. Now the purpose of the TE45 mass driver was the fact that it's a repurposed piece of mining equipment and as a result it fires the 500mm fracturing block so it is a quite um, larger than the previous uh, Alliance railgun type of weapon but still has the same range of 21,000 meters. and we'll come back to this later in the video. Now both railguns and mass drivers uh, have had a new stat added so this is the temporary effects when fired. So for the Mark 81 railgun, it's a radial signature increase of 1000% for 18 seconds when it fires. Mark 550 railgun has a radar signature increase of 1200 for 18 seconds when fired. And the OSP's TE45 mass driver has a radar signature size of 1500% after 20 seconds when fired. So why was this change implemented and what does it mean for you? Well, previously, rails were one of the most oppressive weapons in the game prior to the modular missile update where they really took a nerf. And you can see because of their range being able to fire out to 21,000 meters, previously a spyglass would only be able to detect a railgun ship out to 11.5. So they could sit uh, fairly far back, put down oppressive rates of fire when uh, fully buffed with E-regs and um, absolutely destroy and shred uh, all types of ships once they move through the open. That's one of the reasons why they took a nerf. So now to counteract this, instead of rails simply being able to sit out the back and be undetectable, every time they fire, their radar signature size will bloom, therefore making it easier to spot. So current radar mechanics, however, state that ships have a maximum range. So if you take a spyglass, they're looking for an OSP mass driver. The spyglass only has a range of 11.5 kilometers and would normally not be able to detect the ship equipped with the mass driver. So now when a ship equipped with a railgun or a mass driver fires, its radar signature size will increase based on the stats that I showed you. And then it will also override one of the mechanics in the game being that maximum radar distance. So what will occur is when the radar signature, and I'll put a bit of a graphic on screen to help explain this, once the radar signature is able to touch or interact with the maximum radar distance, then it effectively becomes detected or visible. So to give you a demonstration of this, I have my spyglass ship here. You can see that it goes out to the 11.5 kilometers, which is this blue line in the tactical view. And out here I have the Southern Keep from Task Force Redwood, which is outside the 11.5 kilometers of the spyglass. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire the railgun and then we're going to go back across to the spyglass and you'll see it bloom. So to facilitate that, we're going to pause. We will fire the front and the back weapons, and we'll just fire them a little bit high. Then we'll jump back across to the spyglass. So here we are waiting for it to fire. We see no track. I'll unpause, wait for the ship to roll. There we can see one of the shots from the railgun. Now that I've paused it, we can see that from the spyglass, that previously couldn't detect or the tracker wasn't present that we can now actually see where that ship is with a track and if we come back into the tactical view you can see that even though the max radar range is 11.5 kilometers we're actually able to see this because 
the radar signature of this ship has now increased to such a degree it's actually intersecting uh, with this blue max radar range and therefore becoming detectable. Now, after 18 seconds, that's going to drop back off. I'm just going to turn those off. I'm going to unpause the time and then we'll see it disappear. And it's gone. So if we were to fire again, it would appear. Um, and then after 18 seconds, if it doesn't, it can then reposition and fire again and we'd lose that track. So this now gives you the ability as the player to take some sort of action against this ship. You can either jam in that direction, you could uh, fire some missiles in that direction, you could just have a general understanding of where that ship is, and by doing so, you can th throw something out there to simply say, I think that there is a ship here, or I know that there is a ship here because it popped up, but it's outside the range and everyone can then move around it. So it's a bit of a quality of life to show you where the shots are now coming from, and actually gives you the chance to then enact some sort of a counter attack or moving into some sort of defensive posture so there's also been a change to the 300 millimeter ap rail sabo ammunition and how it applies damage so first of all the ammo now ignores damage resistance damage resistance you can see on the right hand side under ship stats so damage resistance is the total maximum component damage resistance up the top here and then down the bottom where it says integrity rating the more components that you add the higher the damage resistance threshold will go up to, up to a maximum of 5%. So if this ship here was to be hit by one of the 300 millimeter rail sabos and originally does 80 damage, well then it will now, instead of being reduced by 5% or the amount filled up within the integrity rating, it'll simply do its full amount. In addition to that, the 300 millimeter rail sabo used to operate differently between overpenetrating, in which case it would have a fall off damage applied. And if it didn't overpenetrate, it would effectively dump all of its um, damage into the first component that it, um, that it interacted with within the ship. Now occurs is all of the mechanics are the same in terms of how it would normally operate for overpen. And so for a bit of an example, we'll take the 80 hit point damage uh, that occurs from the rail sabo. First component is going to take 50% of that, so it'll take 40 damage. Second one will take 20 damage. The third one will take 10 damage. And the fourth one, if I'm counting correctly, We'll take five and five damage and the fifth component will take 2.5 and it'll go so on and so on so instead of completely knocking out one component per hit you're now doing multiple bits of damage across the ship and therefore if you continually shoot from the same angle eventually you will be able to override that first component and then go through that me that method um, so we're not losing ships as fast or you're not losing like your drives to one direct hit or you're not losing your power to um, due to one direct hit you now have an increased chance to take a hit suffer the suffer a debuff and we'll talk about that in, uh, in the next section and then from there take a little bit of damage across a few components but be able to continue on so let's have a look now at the 300 millimeter railgun sabo's chance of causing random events previously on impact railguns had the chance to cause a debuff and that could be including a critical event and i think the chance was around like two or three percent but with enough railgun strikes it could proc and be quite deadly and therefore causing fairly early on in the game critical overloads that you just couldn't um, put out as you continually suffered more and more uh, railgun strikes teams your damage control teams were simply overwhelmed so the 300 millimeter railgun sabo can no longer create critical events uh, on impact however with sufficient time and damage you can still um, cause them the normal way like you would with he however they will do a hundred percent chance to cause a random event and this will also cause a random event in a random component if you only hit the structure's hitbox, even if the ship's not structure broken. And which that means is if you um, don't hit a component, but you do hit the internal hitbox, and the internal hitbox is um, for the structure is a very thin or small uh, rectangular box somewhere within uh, this ship. And what that means is when, when you hit that, but you don't hit a component, it's going to just pick a random component to do a random debuff to. So we'll have a look at this. Uh, I'm controlling the enemy and we'll be able to look on our damage control board. You can see as we take another shot here, we've now created a fire. Fires are a little bit more deadly now in this patch as well. So the railgun strikes on smaller ships that don't have a damage control um, to be able to put out fires will eventually burn. And you can see there's another fire. Now we've taken um, another debuffs up the top here atmospheric leak and gyroscopic drift i've got two railguns firing at our ship um, we've got another one that's propped over here this gy gyroscopic drift as well 
another one's occurred up here and another one down below. So what's effectively going to happen now is the railguns are going to be able to punish uh, ships by simply overwhelming a lot of the damage control. As you can see, that damage control is now needing to move around. And if left unchecked, it will effectively be able to um, overwhelm the ship in terms of just debuffs, which then will be able to spread or take out certain components. So the railgun has really become that support weapon for the Alliance. So if you also then engage with other weapon systems, that was actually doing other component damage as well, then that on top of the debuffs will just overwhelm uh, everything on that ship uh, over time and therefore be able to neutralize it. Finally, at the very beginning, we spoke about the 500 millimeter fracturing block. This is the ammunition that feeds the T-45 mass driver, which is the Alliance uh, weapon. And um, this one has a range of 21,000 meters, a muzzle velocity of 2,000 meters, and moves pretty quickly. It'll penetrate th uh, 30 meters and do high component damage of 40, um, 400 HP, I should say, and an armor penetration of 120. Now, you'll notice straight off the bat that it is completely different to um, the way that the, or some of the stats of the 300 millimeter AP rail sabo, and that's because it doesn't operate mechanically like a rail gun. If anything, it operates more mechanically or functionally within the game, like um, a HE or an AP shell. So, what will occur is the 500 millimeter fracturing block will fire. It'll be able to penetrate the armor of pretty much everything with its 120 centimeters of armor penetration. And then it will penetrate up to 30 meters. If the game calculates that it should, that round should stop before 30 meters, or if it hits at 30 meters, uh, is effectively at sort of terminal distance, it will then explode and therefore cast sort of damage rays uh, out within the ship that it has been uh, embedded in. Uh, and then it'll do its damage around that. Now, I have been meaning to do an armor and uh, internal sort of damage tutorial at some point. I will get to it um, to give you a little bit more information around this. But at this point in time, that's how it works. So from the game's perspective, it operates more as a HE shell as opposed to a, a Alliance railgun shell. And that's why it's important to have the differentiation between Alliance uh, railguns and OSP mass drivers. Right, that ends uh, this video. I hope I haven't lost you along the way. If I was to summarize, Alliance uh, Railguns support weapons. Um, they do a lot of debuffs but can't do critical damage. Um, use them to support 450 millimeters or to put debuffs onto something that are like small ships and then use the Alliance mass drivers more as uh, long range HE weapons um, that will um, do significant damage at range and speed. All right, thanks for watching and take care.